Got another paper three question for you to try. So this one covers oxidation number, enthalpy change of solution, reaction rates, and there's an unfamiliar organic mechanism. Hope you like the video, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Part A, what's the name of RbClO4? So you can see I've already put in some oxidation numbers. So rubidium's in group one, so it's plus one oxidation number for that. And you've got four oxygens, each one at minus two. So basically, what oxidation number does the chlorine need to be to keep the whole thing neutral? And it's got to be plus seven. So the name of this is going to be rubidium chlorate, not chloride, Roman seven, V-I-I. Next part of the question switches to the other rubidium salt. So rubidium chlorate 5 this is, not that they've asked that. Um, and we've got some information here to calculate the enthalpy change of solution. So first thing we'll do is Q equals MC delta T. Just be careful, the M that we use is the mass of the solution. The 102 grams, not that 2 grams of the solid RbClO3. That's multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the solution, which we're told is the same as water. So 4.18 multiplied by the temperature change. So this is dropped by one and a half degrees C. So that comes out at 639.54 joules. And because we've got to calculate the enthalpy change of solution in a typical unit of kilojoules per mole, we need to put that into kilojoules. So we divide by a thousand to do that. Next thing we do is work out how many moles of this rubidium chlorate have been dissolved. So that's just mass over MR. 0.01183. The dot 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 just means that I'm keeping the full number in my calculator. So to get the delta H solution, we do the kilojoules divided by the moles. So the number is coming out as 54.04. But remember, enthalpy changes must have a sign. So because it's endothermic, it's plus 54.04. Moving on to part B, so the students carried out two um, experiments, two reactions of this HCl and measured the initial rate. So we know the starting concentration for the first experiment of the HCl and then we're given some information about its pH for the second experiment. So for the first experiment where the rate was 9.52 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cube per second, the concentration of the acid was 0.68 moles per decimeter cubed. And because it's monobasic, the H plus concentration will also be 0.68 moles per decimeter cubed. So for the second experiment, we're going to use the pH of the diluted acid to get the new H plus concentration. So H plus concentration equals 10 to the minus pH, so 10 to the minus 1.5. So the new H plus concentration is down to 0.0316 moles per decimeter cubed. So what we've got to do now is work out the factor, the dilution factor for the new acid. So we just put the original concentration over the new one. So you can see that that's 21.5 times less concentrated in the second experiment. Because it's first order, we just need to divide the um, original rate by 21.5. So the initial rate for the diluted acid is 4.43 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cube per second. And finally, the unfamiliar mechanism. So we've got some information about this benzene diazonium ion, and we've got some information about a three-step mechanism. So for step one, we've got to eliminate nitrogen gas and form a carbocation. So what's happened there is a pair of electrons in this bond has gone onto that N plus, and that's obviously broken that carbon nitrogen bond. And so there's your nitrogen gas product. And the remainder, this organic part, will have a positive charge on that carbon, and that's your carbocation. Step two, so nucleophilic attack by water. So you can see I've already drawn in the water molecule with its lone pair on the oxygen. So a curly arrow from the lone pair to that carbon plus. So there's the organic product of step two in the box now. And step three, proton loss to form the organic product. So a pair of electrons in one of the OH bonds will be attracted or will go to the O plus and that H will break off as an H plus ion and give our products phenol and the H plus ion. 